Okay, who's ready for some real flint napping? I messed with this in an earlier video. I'm going to reduce this down, see if I can get anything out of it. And if I can't, I got to back up here. This is a piece of chert that I don't know what it's going to do. It's raw, right? Looks like it's going to be pretty nasty. I got another one over there. I got some more chert sitting over here. See that? So I got backups. All right, so let's do a rock to point type video. Oh, that one hit my knuckle. All right. The little flake that came off. Somehow, when I hit it, it flew backwards. All right. Let's see. Typical landscape rock. This did get darker with the heat. Don't ask me why it gets darker. Because even if I had researched it and told you, I'd probably be wrong. Yeah. No guarantee that I'm right after I do my research. What am I looking for? Well, I want to get rid of the crud. Nap off the worst first. got internal issues I might not be able to get much we shall see I will grind it okay I'll take the time to grind it before I smash the edges into oblivion Do it. Yes. Usable flake. I like those. I like those. Where's the other usable flake? Is this usable? Probably. Probably. All right. Good. Usable. I, uh, I ordered a new book today. It's a more recent updated book on lithic analysis. It is also a textbook. So I get to peer into the life and life ways of the archaeologist. Yeah. Be like uh, Jacques Cousteau and explore how, the, how these creatures live. Oh, yes. Anyway, supposedly this, it has better explanations on preforms and bifaces and other artifacts than uh, Andrewski's viewpoint. Supposedly. I won't tell you what the book is yet. I got to review it. It might be junk. And yeah, I spent. Spend good money on it. I could not find a, a decent, cheap copy of it. Anyway, it's not a flint napping book. I don't recommend any flint napping books out there. Although I have given out titles of flint napping books that exist. I don't recommend any of them. No. Why is that, you might ask? Somebody tell them. Somebody tell them why flint napping books don't make the grade. Yeah. Most of them don't even cover indirect percussion. Oops. 
And that wasn't even, that was a slightly diving flake, just slightly. Just slightly, and it managed to split the whole thing. No defects in the middle. Not really. There's a little bit of one, but... Yeah, I could have gotten something out of it. But if it broke at this stage, right at the thickest, the thickest part, that would have been hard to keep the length. Yeah. If it breaks that easily in half, that would have been hard to keep the length. All right. I can still use, use those two halves, you know. No big deal. Let me get rid of these. All right, here we go. This is probably going to be a better option for a longer piece. Some of you might ask, well, why would you why would you heat treat something when it's not going to be good for longer pieces? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? Aren't you going to try to get long pieces? Isn't that the your goal? That might be your goal, not my goal. I just want stuff that's easy to nap. I end up napping this the hard stuff on video because that's what everyone wants to see everyone wants to see that everyone wants to see the hard stuff to nap and i kind of do also i do want to see the difficult stuff because it gives you an idea what the potential is i understand that uh, a lot of people want to see the potential of various techniques what they're capable of doing I want to see that too oftentimes I have to do it myself to see what the tools are capable of doing so I end up napping the hard stuff on video Difficult stuff. Not just hard as in hardness, but hard as in difficult. I started out with difficult material too. And the people that I initially was teaching how to flint nap started out with difficult material. So it just became a habit, I guess. Just a default way of life, I guess. Just napping the hard stuff. Napping the difficult stuff. Because a lot of times, people will give you the difficult rock for free. They'll go, yeah, if you, if you want it, I'll give it to you. I got stuff I don't want to nap. You want it? And your answer is always going to be, yes. And then you get home, you crack it open, and you start to wonder why you're masochistic. <laughs> why do I do this to myself? Yeah. Why? Because it's free. It's free. Free rock. And because... A lot of times you might think, if you can nap the hard stuff, you can nap anything. Oh, yeah. Is that true? If you can nap the hard stuff, you can nap anything? No, that's not true. No matter what you're napping, you've got to get used to it. Everything has its own learning curve. You get used to napping the hard stuff, but you try to translate it to something that's easy. You're going to snap everything in half. It's a different skill set. You might say, I snap everything in half anyway. Well, once you get past that, once you get past snapping everything in half, there are some things you won't snap in half. But you got to readjust with every difference in material. 
so you don't snap it in half. Yeah, this requires enormous amounts of force. This is excellent stuff for heat treating. I might just work on another heat treat piece and it's different in consistency totally different between this stuff and that stuff but I'm gonna try to get something out of it anyway how's that yep so does being me does it do I notice that being able to nap all this difficult stuff, does it help me with the nice stuff? No, not with me. I don't, I don't see, I don't see it helping me with the easy stuff. Because it's a whole different ball game. It just helps with the hard stuff. The more of this hard stuff you do, the, uh, actually the easier it gets. Uh, you just can't get really, really thin points in most cases. So if that doesn't bug you, then you're all set. If you're okay with not getting thin points, you're all set. Now, if thickness makes you feel sick, then yeah, I would suggest not working on difficult materials. I suggest heat treating it and getting used to heat, get, getting used to how the heat treat feels when you're napping it. You'll snap a lot of it in half until you get used to it, and then once you get used to heat treat, you're gonna love it. Yeah. Except you won't be able to do stuff like that. I noticed that with a heat treat, if I try to do something like this, I hit it extremely hard, okay? If I try to do that with a heat treat, a lot of times it curve it curls up. Just like that last piece, it'll just barely dive and it'll take the whole tip off or it'll break it in half. But with raw, the path of least resistance tends to be out the proper way, not diving. Although I do see a little bit of a issue with a crack there. Hopefully that doesn't go all the way through. But there is an issue with a crack there. It might have tried to dive. I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. We'll see. We'll see if it will rear its ugly head in, in a little bit. Hopefully not. So yeah, this is a piece of raw shirt. In case I didn't mention it. This is raw here. These are all heat treats over there. And the, the pile I've got the pile I've got going there is raw. This is heated to more than 550. Okay, and this is these are all raw chucks. So I don't know if I was chucking some of this raw stuff. No. I do have to be careful I don't mix the raw stuff with the heated stuff. There's nothing worse than thinking you gotta you gotta piece of heat treat and it ends up being raw it messes with your brain yeah I'm thinking what is going on here did I mix how much of it did I mix up this is raw and I got it mixed up with the heat treat how much of this is raw and how much is heat treat it's messing with my brain yeah Try not to mix it up. Try not to nap with the two different types on the floor at the same time. Like I'm doing. Don't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happened to the monkey see monkey do? You only do at your own risk. Yeah.
Still got to do monkey see, monkey do, but you do it at your own risk. Oh, yes. going to be a full length feature or am I going to divide this into 30 minute segments there's some people that like the 30 minute segments I prefer not to divide it up it saves me time if I just go straight through yeah uh oh we got some issue there there's an issue it goes right through there looks like that's not good. Hmm. Two issues. That one there. This one up here. Yeah, see how it's separating? That's not good. Do, uh, do, do real artifacts have those defects in them? Do they still make knives and blades with those defects? Not that I recall. I don't recall any artifacts with those defects in it, in them. Not that bad. I have seen a slight crack, I think. But not a major crack. You might ask, you never seen a major crack on a on a biface either? One of those just roughed out pieces of stone? That could have been a discard. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I've seen a lot with stuff fractures. But cracks like this on the edge, I can't remember. I don't want to say no. And then look through my artifacts later and then find one. And then just thrown away just like this. And the, the napper said, no, it's not going to be good. I just chucked it. Tossed it. Yeah. Good thing no one's named Toss. Yeah. No one's named Toss out there, right? They won't be complaining if I say I toss it. Right, Chuck? Right. Where is that crack going? I don't know. It doesn't look like it goes very far. I'm hitting everywhere and it's not it's not breaking in half yet. There might be some might be some hope to this after all. Let's see. We'll see. Did they did they make real artifacts with two different sides, two different consistencies? That's a good question too. I don't remember. Uh oh, I can see that. I can see that crack there, and I can see one there. Or maybe that's a step fracture on that side, but that's a crack on this side. Yep. Dang it. This side looks beautiful. All right, let's see. Should I? Yeah, I, I do need to remove that crack first before I stress it anymore. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so I'm going to relax and uh, dive into some indirect percussion to uh, thin this down. Hopefully, hopefully I'll grind it enough for you grinding guys. 
they say just grind it grind and grind and grind it solves all the problems even the archaeology books say that too much grinding is not good how do they know they know somehow they know that grind too much grinding is not good even the archaeologists know that They're listening to the grinding, the grinding guys. And they, they learned that, you know, the grinding guys are not all knowing. They're very loud. Just like the antler people. Very loud. It's debatable if they know what's going on. It's debatable. I like the word debatable. There's still a crack in there. I didn't get under it yet. All right, so why do I like the word debatable? It seems like it's a pretty useless word because everything can be debated. It's like inventing, inventing the word existable. It's existable. Able to exist. <laughs> yeah. Debatable. It's about as useless as the word existable. Are there some things that are that you cannot debate? They would seem to be so. I know some people that are not playing with a full deck that uh, think that some things are beyond debate oh yeah not debatable not existable uh, I got myself a bending flake started out with a reverse overshot no they call that a circular fracture yeah, I just learnt it. I got I got learnt from some archaeologists. That's a circular fracture. Yeah, they learned me that yesterday. No, this morning. I was reading this morning. See how there's bar barely any bulb of percussion, and it removes a circular fracture from the edge. Bending. Although definitions vary somewhat on the bending flakes. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. Last time I tried to interpret an archaeologist's point of view, I got it wrong on the Andrevsky stuff. He does have a definition for preform that's that's different from the non-haftable category he put the preforms in the non-haftable category but it appears that his definition of preform could include pieces with hafts on them or hafting areas on them yeah So, I'm not going to try to interpret other archaeological statements that I read this morning until I get my new book. I won't tell you what it is yet. Why? Because I might not like it. Get all excited and it turns out to be a piece of garbage. And then you might ask, what am I going to do then? I've been talking all about it. I'm, I'm just going to say, remember that book I was talking about? And you'll say, yeah. 
And I'll say, okay, forget about that book I was talking about. <laughs> what book? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They don't know the book. They didn't tell you the name. Hmm. I'm sneaky like that. Oh, yeah, I'm very sneaky. You didn't know? Now you know. One of my sons asks me, do you like this or do you like that? Do you like it? I'm, I'm learning not to answer that. <laughs> because liking something has a lot of different meanings to it. Or so I like to tell myself. One of the, one of the, trap, the easiest traps to fall into is when you Answer the question, do you like that or do you want that? Where's my... Where's the tool for hitting against the step fractures? I don't see it. That's my, one of my favorites. Oh, I know why I don't see it. I was using it as a screwdriver just a little while ago. You know, because I like multi-tools. I like the multi tools and I use it multi multily. Where is it? Oh. Golly, you would think I, you know, I try to minimize the number of tools and it still gets buried and camouflaged under all my tools, and it's, it's a big thing too. Unbelievable. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get rid of that without. Cracking it in half. Did I do it? Ooh, it almost. Is it good enough? Yeah, it's probably good enough. I need to strike one of these edges on the other side really, really hard to get that turtle back. I just removed the front part of that stuff fracture. I could probably hit it again, but I don't know. That's kind of dicey. Although, I do need to hit the back of that step fracture. Well, I'll try it. So what if it's dicey? I got backup rocks. Oh yes, I got backup rocks. Ooh, nice. You see how I did that, right? You guys are watching? You guys that were jonesing for some real flint napping? You might be saying you're you might be saying that's cheating. Cheating. You're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to do that at all. You're cheating. I know. Oh, yes. It's controlled cheating. <laughs> Don't worry. As long as it's controlled, you're okay. You know? As long as it's controlled, everything's good. Right, authoritarians? Yeah. There you go. So, what do I talk about now? I was looking at my analytics again. I'm always curious to see what you guys are watching. Actually, I've been doing some research on what makes videos so popular sometimes. And then I drift off and I start I start looking at what you guys watch too. Mysteries. You guys watch mysteries of the ancient world and stuff like that. Yeah. Mysteries of the ancient world. Now, that gets into some dicey material. Because yeah, then you start, you start studying Atlantis and mermaids and all that kind of stuff. I don't watch those videos. But, you know, I started watching a couple Mysteries of the Ancient World stuff. And uh, it's pretty much same old, same old. It's 
stuff they've been asking question about questions about for a long time. Still can't figure it out. Like what you might ask? Like stuff I'm not gonna get into on this channel. No, no, no. No, no, no. Nope, not going to get into it. And bushcraft, bushcraft videos. You guys like to watch bushcraft. Oh, yes, I like the bushcraft stuff too. So that's no big surprise. What is surprising is these guys living in, in uh, shelters in the winter get millions of views. Yeah. When all they gotta do is jump in their SUV and drive home. And say, well, I was gonna make a video on that, but I didn't. I'll do it, try it again tomorrow. So they, they tried again. Finally, they, they're able to stay out there. You don't know. You don't know how many takes it took. How many takes it to get to that center of that Tootsie Pop? Just be able to stay out in the winter overnight by choice in a shelter made of branches oh yeah you didn't know branches are good branches are good for shelter and you thought branches were just something you take to the dump because they get in the way when you're mowing, they'll slack you, smack you in the face. Yeah. No branches can save your life in the winter. According to those guys. Got enough branches. You'll be doing okay. Yeah. So what am I going to do now on this? What am I going to do now? I got some I got some options cuz I took care of the, all the major stuff. All the nasty areas are less than halfway across and I can always cheat and get my little spatula tool out. If I don't bury it under my stuff again, And I'm working a raw piece today because it's a little bit of different change of pace from the heat treat. And a lot of people, they don't want to do the heat treat stuff. Not because they don't like it, just they don't want to do it. Perfectly okay. Not because they don't agree with it. They don't think it's weird or anything. They don't think it hurts the environment. Although some microbes might get killed in the in the process of doing the heat treat. Yeah. Might kill a bunch of microbes. Microbial death. You never know. There might be some intelligent microbes in there. Yeah. Or in a, in a million years, there'll be intelligent creatures, those little microbes. And here I am, frying them to death. Yeah. Never know. Goodness gracious, that area is hard. I was looking at uh, a book on... Actually, I have that book. Do I have that book? I think I do, yes. Anyway, I was looking at a book, and they, the book had some bifaces in it. They were snapped in half. Real artifacts... 
The head, the biface is snapped in half. This is from the southwest of the United States. Perfectly preserved. I think it was at one of the Pueblos, Grasshopper Pueblo. Yeah. Anyway, they're, they're long and skinny. And right off the bat, the archaeologist in the description says, this indicates that the long and skinny is what they were after. Long and skinny points. But they snapped in half, so he didn't get to it. You think so? You know, they're trying to preserve both length and width. When you're a flint napper, you try to preserve both length and width if you're making just a blade. And the reason, one of the main reasons why it gets narrow is because you can't flake across halfway. It's too difficult to flake more than halfway across. You make it more narrow. It's not because you want it long and narrow. It's because you want to thin it. I'm trying to thin this. It's not thinning, so i got to make it more narrow. That's what reminded me of that. They don't know that because they don't, they don't do any napping on difficult material. So they make statements like, long and narrow means they want it long and narrow. No, they might not want it long and narrow. They might get all angry and say, it's too narrow, I can't use it for very long, it's going to get way too narrow and I can't resharpen it like I really want it to. I want it wide, wide and long. But I got to make it narrow because it's not flaking. I got to send flakes in halfway or it's not going to get thin. And thin is best for cutting. Yeah. They're going to get all ticked. The nappers back in the day. It's not because they wanted it long and narrow. Not necessarily. Well, it could be a reason. I'm not saying it's not a reason. But a lot of times it's because they just can't get it to flake. Like, I can't get this to flake. i got to make it more and more narrow so I can start thinning it down more. Anyway. One of these days, I'll stop talking about that stuff. You might say, really? No, not really. I probably never will stop. I, I want to stop talking about that stuff, but I probably will never stop talking about it. Because i got to do research. People ask me questions and stuff. Unless I start saying, well, no, I, can ans I can't answer your questions no more. No. <laughs> Someone will say, well, isn't that a bit drastic? I'm not going to answer no more questions anymore. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit drastic. Whew, that was, that's a relief. That was anxiety filled, though. Yeah. Another one, another anxiety flake coming up. I need to label these flakes coming off AF. Anxiety flake. These are anxiety flakes. These ones that could break the whole piece in half. If I'm not careful. And I can't even guarantee that, that even though I think I'm being careful, I actually am being careful. I don't know if I actually am being careful. I'm trying to be. You don't know until it's too late. Yeah, I try to be careful and not do too much heavy duty smackiola on that and it didn't go so I gotta cheat yeah 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 I used to not cheat in my old videos remember I never use this in my old videos I just started using this recently so I figure you know if I can't get rid of them in a natural way I'm not a good napper. And then I realized, probably not a good napper anyway. Yeah. Because I just, I made the, the metal too skinny just then. Now it's going to be risky to work on the tip. Yeah. But you know what? I don't care. 
We'll just use my middle name. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? You might be saying, well, you risk breaking it in half with every strike anyway. What's the problem? Yeah, the, the abrader is usually what causes my gloves to wear out. So if I can remember, I'll try to keep the, the gloves away from the abrader, but the, the tips are always poking out too far. Yeah. So how long is it? Let me see. How long is this? Let me see. I try to keep. I try to keep this always extended, but it doesn't keep. It doesn't stay extended. It's got rock chips in it. Who put rock chips in it? Somebody's been getting into my stuff and putting rock chips all in my stuff. Let's see, four inches. So I can't lock it. It's got little chips. All right, here we go. Yeah, I could have broken it in half with that one. Another anxiety, another AF flick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at that tip. Look how fat that tip is. That's not good. It's not good at all. Need to thin it down. And uh, if I were to heat treat this, it would get much more consistent between the two different types of chert here. There's two different types of chert. The top one is translucent and kind of easy to nap. The bottom is not translucent and not easy to nap. Let's see if I can take a snapshot. I can never get a good thumbnail of what I want to express in the video. Yeah, so maybe that's a good one where you can see just the top edge is translucent. Yeah. All right, took a couple of snapshots. Yeah, the bottom is not translucent at all. It's totally different shirts. Just like they welded two different shirts together. They, the natures, the nature. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. And uh, you might be asking, why don't I nap through the good stuff first to get to the bad stuff? I thought you said that's what works better. Yeah, well. I would rather take the shot through the bad stuff. Why? I don't want to lose too much of the good stuff. That's why. I do want to have some of the good stuff left. Right? Right. I think one of the reasons why I'm having a trouble with the flaking is uh, there's too many embedded pieces of stone. One of the dogs is digging under the shed. I think that's what that is. One of these days, I'll show you the holes that Kevin digs in the yard. Him and his brothers. He's got four brothers and one sister. No. One, two, three. Yeah, four brothers. Dang, we have a lot of dogs. He's got three, three brothers... One sister and a dad. The mom got run over. Yeah, she was she was not our dog. We were babysitting her for, uh, I don't know, almost a year. And everything was going fine until the very end. And she decided, okay, it's time to have some pups. It's like, what the heck? So we kept them all.
Oh yeah. And uh, her owner took her back home. And then I don't know how many months later she got run over. She escaped from the house or something, I guess. Anyway, I don't want to be depressing. I will show you probably one day what they do in the yard. Yeah. I cannot get that. That's just solid concrete. Yeah. Not even with a clean surface on the steel can I get that to flake. And I just used the spatula tool to clear off some steps and now I got more. Oh yes. That's just the way it goes. It's already 46 minutes. How am I going to clean this up? Do I have enough time to clean up the mess that I'm making? Maybe. Maybe. I got a feeling this is getting a little too dicey. I might I might have to leave this thick just to finish it. I'm gonna be hitting it super hard, so I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit. Make sure I have no incipient cracks. I'm going to let this video run all the way. I'm not going to interrupt it. The guys that like to see the 30 minute segments are out of luck on this one. I'm just going to keep going. If I lose my groove, I won't be able to get rid of all those step fractures. And this is just for video. I'm not even going to offer this one in the auction probably. Yeah, probably not. I might, I might say, well, that's good enough. I'm not going to continue. I'm going to drop it in the waste bucket. Just like they used to do back in the day. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. It's probably already too narrow for the point style that most nappers back in the day were making. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's still more than an inch wide, right? Oh yes. It's well within range of many of the point styles, so I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say it's out of range. Still within range. Yeah. But compared to where it started with, what did I start with? I got these kind of flakes, right? Let's just analyze this for a second. I'll show you what I got. Remember that stone? I should probably do a comparison, but I really can't unless I have two identical stones to start with. If I tried to get spalls off of that stone instead of trying to get this, would I have more useful flakes or would I not? I mean, I do have some useful flakes in here. But if I was going just for useful flakes instead of a biface, would I have more yield? Well, you probably say it depends on what you mean by useful flakes. I mean, spalls to make arrowheads or small at little dart points. Instead of one like this, I'm not. I don't, I'm not seeing very many nice pieces in there. I do see some. Let's separate them out that I can use for points. Four. The rest are cruddies, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much just a bunch of cruddies. 
might be able to use that one, but this is a, I do need to heat treat it. Anyway, what's more productive, trying to get a blade out of it or trying to get a bunch of spalls out of it? I suppose if you don't need spalls, you're swimming in spalls, you're swimming in flakes, but you're not swimming in blades. I guess that makes sense. You don't care, you waste all that stuff. If you're already swimming in blades. See, I got more blades than I can possibly use in five lifetimes. Flakes, I mean. I got more flakes than I could possibly use. I suppose that would make sense. All right, I need to prepare this edge for strikes coming up. I'm going to try to clean up the edge as much as possible for these indirect percussion strikes coming up. And we're, we got we got what you all been waiting for. Pressure flaking. Oh yeah. Everybody's been waiting for that. They love when their eyes glaze over. You might say, yeah, you haven't made my eyes glaze over yet in the video. What's up? I'm waiting. I love my when my eyes glaze over and I change the channel. Because I've already seen pressure flaking umpteen times. Yeah, I like it. I like being bored. And you guys saying that? No? It's got to be at least one. One of you guys must like this process, this pressure flaking stuff, to, to regularize the edge. I like watching it anyway. No? Yeah. When I'm doing this at a nap in, that's when most people go and do something else. Start, I start regularizing the edge and they walk off. That's how I can tell that they're either very experienced or very new. Because it, making it regular is one of the most important steps of all. So they've already seen it a billion times. And they walk off. Or they think it's not important and they walk off. Yeah. I didn't really regularize it all that well, did I? It's still kind of lumpy. Yeah, it's got lumps and it'd be better if it was just solid edge. No lumps or deltas anywhere. But I'm gonna try to nap it this way anyway. Maybe I'll zigzag it. I gotta eliminate the step fractures. I, I wasn't too careful because it's just concrete. It, it is so concretey that I really didn't care. But now, it didn't break yet. It didn't break in half, so it didn't solve my problem. Now I gotta deal with it. Yeah. Now I got to deal with it. Okay. Zoom back out. Mm -hmm. We're not off to a good start. There we go. Yeah, it's going to force me to use maximum force. Force me to use force. And it's still being stubborn. We have to use bigger, bigger flaker. Yeah. I switched down to a quarter inch nail. I'm going to have to go back up to the three eighths inch. 
steel rod. This is all mild steel, as far as I know. Gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do about that step fracture. I just gotta pound the living daylights out of it, I guess. I'm gonna do a lot of this. A lot more than I'm expecting to do. That's dicey too. If I don't do this right off, I just pop the tip right off. I'm hitting it like this. With the tip of the mallet so I can get more velocity, but it's not it's not really working. All right. Now another thing that the archaeologists say is you can generate more power with uh, percussion than you can with pressure. Well, I don't think they've picked out step fractures before. I'm going to try to pick on this with the pressure flicker. There. I pushed on the front there. With percussion, I wasn't able to deliver that much power, but with pressure, I was. So, what are they talking about? Neck cannot deliver as much pressure power with pressure as you can with percussion. It all depends on what you're doing. Yeah, imagine that. So when am I going to write a flint napping book? Put my money where my mouth is. I've been trying to write one for years. Every time I try, I end up saying no because I misinterpreted something or I still am not fully understanding the definitions. I'm still not able to do folsoms. Still don't know the mystery of the Eden points. Still haven't tried every every conceivable way to do a Clovis point. I got my ways, but then I haven't tried all the ways. Oh yeah, there's different ways. Yeah. And that sort of thing. Who am I to write a book on flint napping if I can't even do a folsom? I can do a folsom, it just breaks every time. I can do broken folsoms. Looks just like the real one that's broken. I can do a perfect imitation of a broken folsom. Thinness and everything. Broken right down the middle. Or right in half, just like the real ones. But that's about it. I can't do a real one in, intact, not with my methods that I'm currently using. So you might say, just use different methods. Yeah. Well, when I start using different methods and get good at them, that's when I'm going to write the book. For now, I'll just do the videos. I'll probably do different guides on different things. Just guides. Introductory type guides and stuff. I don't know where that was. But it looked, I think it helped. Yeah, that last strike was okay. I got a, I got a mess on this edge. But I think I can clean that up. I think.
<laughs> yeah, would I would I use this? Would I keep going if it was just me? No. I'd probably discard this. Discard. Start over. But no one wants to see me discard it. That's too easy. All right. I am going to cut the video right there at one hour. Uh, I got to go pick up my son from work. I'm driving him to work now. And back. Oh, yeah. Oops. So, yeah. I'll cut it right there. I'll upload it for you guys. And then I'll get back to it after the auction. How's that? And I'll figure out what I'm going to make with it. And maybe I'll heat treat it. So it'll give me a day to think about it. So that's it for now. All right. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Okay, let's see. That's it.